Okay, so Ms. Tucker and I talked about what's coming up. So module three, the end of module three, does become harder than the beginning. So you're gonna be getting your test back from the mid module. The second half of the module, the end of the module, is tougher. But then module four happens. <clears throat> and I don't wanna say that we've been doing not math, because we have been doing math. But you've been, oh, I know that I can move this shape, or I need to rotate this shape, or I need to multiply. Those are all very basic mathematical things. In module four, we are going to really dive into equations. Not just equations like this, but also linear equations where we're going to be graphing. So we are, instead of spiraling backwards, we're going to be preparing you to move forward. So expect from this point until module four, us to be putting equations as your warm up. It is crucial that you have the problems written down and the work shown because we will be getting into problems that you are not going to be able to do in your head. So what we show on the board is what you should have written down. You are solving these three equations. So why it's a hey, do I divide when I have a coefficient next to a variable? When you have a number, which we call the coefficient next to a variable, smack that next to it, that means multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. Good job, Vlad. Okay, I'm gonna go over them. Okay. Okay, is everyone good for right now? Because I'm going to go over them. <coughs> so usually we draw our little line down the middle, right? Mm -hmm. So since we know that this is multiplication, the opposite of multiplication is division. So we're going to divide by 12. And then what we do with one side, we have to do to the other side. So we're going to divide by 12 on this side. So now x is by itself, and that equals 5. If you don't have that written down, or if you have that <coughs> as subtraction, please fix your mistake. Ms. Tucker was clear when saying, hey, listen, that's multiplication. We need to divide. As I walk around, I'm seeing some of you fix it and some of you not. We should be fixing it. Okay, for the next one, we're going to 
<coughs> draw our line down. We're going to take our 12 over first, so it has a negative in front of it, so we're going to add 12, which moves our, once we do that to this side, we got to do it to this side. So we have 3x equals 27, but we still have a number attached to our x, so we still, that's still multiplication, so we need to divide by 3. What we do with one side, do to the other, and we divide by three. So now we have x equals, who can tell me what 27 divided by three is? Tyler. Nine. Good. You almost called on me. I know, I really did. I almost thought about it. Okay, so for this one, we see parentheses, so we know that we need to distribute. So we're going to take our 2, our outside number, and we're going to distribute it to our x. And we're also going to distribute it to our 3. So that comes up to 2x plus 6 equals 10. And so now that looks like this, pretty much, right? So we're going to draw our line. So our first one is we're going to take our 6 over, so we have 2x left equals 4, and then we still have a number attached to our x, so we're now going to take that over, so it's multiplication, we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2 on that side, so that brings us up to x equals 2. Flex on if you got those three right. Nice. Um, give me a moose antler if you got two of the three right. Give me a bull antler if you got one of them right. Give me a bull antler if you got one right. Bulls don't have antlers, they have horns, ladies. You need to talk to Mr. Diddy. Mr. Diddy's on the top of me. He said, horns don't fall off, antlers do. So there are no bull antlers. You guys are wrong, I'm sorry. Would you like to give me bull horns if you got it right? Now that I can know, like you're very excited about I like the now. antlers. Okay, so, listen, this is going to be a recurring thing. We will be seeing equations every day that you come into this class. From this point forward, we will see equations every single day. The next time you walk through this door, expect a graded warm-up on what? Equations. Oh, equations. Oh, okay. Good. Go ahead and get out your packet, please. Open it up to lesson eight. While you're doing that, I will come around and hand you your tests. Your test scores were superb. Yes, sir. I didn't get one more. You didn't get one more. Oh, no, packet. Were you not here the day of the test? I came, I had to do the thing in the cafeteria and they were doing it. They gave out. You have a packet from like. Oh, the same. I'm not going to write it. Wait, they gave out. We're good. We're good, I think. Yeah. Scores were outstanding. That's a word that I want to bring back. I heard it last night. Like people don't use the word outstanding enough because outstanding can be so condescending if you like. Like your your grade was outstanding, and you just get a little nod, and you have no idea. Watch, 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 watch. Your grade was outstanding. See, and you don't know. It's such a wonderful word. It's such a wonderful word. Dustin, are you are you laughing? Oh, okay. Here, five, here, five, two, one, two, three. Boom. Confused, but I found the. No, I can't hear what you're saying. Give me one second. Um, is there anybody who can get those back? Oh, that's so good. That's so is there anybody who does not have theirs? Oh. Go ahead and put those in your binders. You should be proud of your scores for the most part. Because they were outstanding. Um, hi. 
Um, Miss Tucker, just in case we want to make an email, still a no show. Nope, just I closed it down. Let's just wait till afterwards, but just want to kind of put that on your. Please go ahead, get out lesson eight. Please, please, please. Here's lesson eight. So let me explain why you guys are the lucky ones. So, first off, you're lucky for a lot of different reasons. Because you have myself and Miss Tucker. That right there makes you lucky. You're welcome. It's like it's like what is that movie? Help me. Help me, what's the movie? You're welcome. Moana. 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 You're welcome. Because you have me. Not because I've done anything, but because I'm that awesome and Miss Tucker is that awesome. You're welcome. Are you sure it's not talking about Miss Tucker? Well, I could just be talking about Miss Tucker, but I'm gonna throw myself in there. I'm gonna ride on her coattails, that's fine. So but why else should you guys consider yourselves lucky? I have no problem saying that this morning did not go, it didn't go poorly, but it didn't go well. I, yes sir. Huh? Oh, no, 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 you're, you're trying to give me reasons why you're lucky. Oh, no, no, I'm telling you why. I didn't teach well this morning. I taught it how I thought I needed to, but since then I've made a lot of corrections and gone, okay, I can say that better. Even though I've been teaching for 14 years, there's still always time to sit back and go, okay, that wasn't exactly how I wanted to say that. I can get better at saying this, this, or this. So I've now taught this lesson twice. Those of you who are watching the live video, you did not have this class, this particular class. You might have been in hour one. You might have been in hour three. You might be in whatever hour is after this, eight, I think. I don't know. But you guys get to see it the best, okay? So if you're confused, that's all right. This lesson is confusing. These next four lessons are harder than the first four. I'm telling you that right now. But what is not confusing is this word similarity. We have talked only briefly about similar figures. We have said similar figures look the same, but are either bigger or smaller. Similarity has a specific thing that we need to know for it. Similarity says that corresponding sides. So well, let's break down those words right there. So copy that down, and then I want to break it down. Well, corresponding sides means in the same place. So if I'm comparing AB to its image, I would say side AB corresponds with side A prime B prime. BC corresponds with B prime C prime. AC would correspond with, this is where you're going to come in, A prime C prime. Thank you, Javen. I thought nobody was going to say anything, and then I was just going to be like, oh my gosh. See, and then I was going to be like, well, this wasn't the perfect teaching, but you're the man. Thank you. Corresponding sides must be, and then we're going to use a word that you should have been using in your shine classes if you're in math, where we talk about a ratio, which is a fraction, equaling to another fraction. When we have a fraction equaling another fraction, it is a specific type of problem, and it starts with P-R-O, like problem. A pro, a pro, a proportion, a proportion, Tyler, air five, boom. So it's a proportion. Corresponding sides must be not proportions, but must be proportional. And we will talk about that more in lesson nine. Well, what else do we know about similarity? Well, if the sides must be proportional, the corresponding angles must 
I'm waiting for you to get it caught up. So the corresponding angles must be a geometry word that means exactly the same. Very good, sir. Must be congruent. Dustin, that was outstanding. So we're going to need to copy this down because I'm going to leave this. Okay. So this is really what similarity means. If I want to prove that something's similar, all of the corresponding sides need to be proportional. And all of the angles, A prime and A, are both 60 degrees, or whatever they happen to be. B and B prime both need to be exactly the same. C and C prime need to be exactly the same. That's what similarity means. Are we good here? This is my happy dance. What faith? I didn't even do anything wrong this time. It's even me a dirty look. Okay. Now, let's go to this first example. It says, in the picture below, we have a triangle ABC that has been dilated from the origin by a scale factor of one half. It is noted by triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. We also have A double prime, B double prime, C double prime which is congruent. So these are exactly the same. Now listen, you ready? I was wrong. When I did the video, I did not read the directions. I taught whatever I wanted to teach. So if you have stuff written down, is it wrong? It's not what the question asked. I went from ABC to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. But the question says, Describe the sequence that would map triangle A double prime to A. Hmm. So I did it backwards. So what you have written down is not what the question's asking. It's whatever I said in the video. I was wrong. Okay? So you should be paying attention. Fair enough? Okay. We are trying to go from A double prime, B double prime, C double prime, back to this big original triangle. Questions on that? I'm trying to take this one back to this one. Let's talk about things that need to happen. Is this triangle in the same place as this triangle? No. Is this triangle in the same place as this triangle? No. When we go in reverse order, we need to physically go in reverse order. Can I go from this triangle straight to the double primes? No, I had to go from this triangle to the primes to the double primes. So if I'm going in reverse order, I have to go from the double primes back which way? To the primes. Aha! Step one. We are describing the sequence. So what do I need to do first to take this guy over here? What rigid transformation? And don't make me flip upside down. Don't make me do those. We had three rigid transformations. We had a translation, we had a rotation, and we had a reflection. What do I need to do to get this guy to this guy? Ava. Translate. A translation, because translate means slide. So we are going to translate. And now we need to be specific. And this is where it gets confusing. So I want to match A double prime up with A prime. I want that triangle to map on top. What that means is, if I've got this is my original and this is my other one, I want it to come right on top of it. It should be right on top. You shouldn't be able to see the other one. So I want it to come right on top. Let me do it for the video. So, and then you only see one marker, right? Okay. So I only want to see one triangle. So here's how I do that. I'm going to try to get A double prime, this point, to A prime. Which way do I need to move it? Left or right? Left. Okay. 
So I'm taking a double prime and I'm moving it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm translating left ten. And then what? Because this is where the point is right now. Where else would I need to go? What, Ava? Down one. And down one. So what I've done is I've taken this left 10 down one. Guess what? Because it's rigid and these are the same exact shape, do I have to do that for every point? No, because they'll all move together. So I've now mapped the double prime onto this one. So now I'm going from these primes back to the original. Well, are they the same size? Oh, so they're not the same size. If they're not the same size, we know we're going to have to dilate by r equals something. Dilate by a scale factor. We have to get this to be bigger or smaller. Which one? Which one? Bigger or smaller? Talk or Andrew? Bigger. This has to get bigger. Where did I get the thing? This high. Remember what I said? We're doing this in reverse, right? So. The original was 1 divided by 2. If I'm doing this the opposite direction, instead of having it like this, the opposite would be it flipped. Because this is the pro, this is the image divided by the pre-image, but now we're going from the image to the pre-image. So we've got to flip those. So instead of dilating by 1 half, what do we have to dilate by? By 2. And that's it. We are doing it in reverse order. Yes, Trevor? You good? Stay away for me, man. You need to stand up and shake it out and do so. Questions on this? This is a little confusing, okay? But we're going to start following some steps. Make sure you have this. The second one is easier, and I promise you it's easier. We have? Yes? We're good? Okay. Okie dokie. Triangle ABC was dilated by a scale factor of one half. We are once again trying to go from, listen, wait, 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 wait. Describe a dilation followed by the basic rigid motion. So the first thing is we're finding a dilation and then the basic rigid motion. It tells me what order to do it. And guess what? I didn't do that in the first hour. You know why? Because I didn't read the directions. Directions are important even for adults. Now I know exactly what steps to do this in. Everybody with me? So we're trying to get from this double prime back to this guy. Except we need to dilate first. So it tells me, describe a dilation. Okay. Step one, dilate by R equals. Here's my double prime. If I want to get back to the original, am I going to make it bigger or smaller? Bigger. We're going in reverse order. The original was dilate by a half. So what do we have to dilate by to get it to be bigger? By two. By two. Okay. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. What does this figure look like if we dilate by two? Do we know? We don't yet because we're dilating this specific figure. We're cutting this middleman out. So I need to figure out what A double prime is, what B double or C double prime, and B double prime. I found those ordered pairs. It tells me that I've got to dilate that by two. Can we do that? What do we do to those ordered pairs? Multiply them by two. Let's do that. So draw your new figure. So I'm going to come here to B double prime. I multiply by four times three, which is eight, six. So there's B. A double prime is six, four. There's A. C is ten, two. Hey, wait a minute. Let's take a look. Does that figure look like this figure? Oh, okay. 
Because we said we had to dilate by two, we physically had to dilate it by two. We did that. Everybody still with me? Okay. And then it says, followed by the basic rigid motion. Once again, we only have three choices. We can translate it, we can rotate it, or we can reflect it. How do you think we're going to get this ABC to be up on this ABC? Are we going to translate? Are we going to rotate? Are we going to reflect? I should see every hand, at least with the guess. You have three choices. Translate, rotate, reflect. Sky. We are absolutely going to translate it because translate means slide. So what I want you to do right now is I want to get this A onto this A. Talk with your partner. Tell me which direction and how many we're going to move. Go ahead. Okay, Trenton, what do you think, man? Left 12 and then so board. Left 12 and then what? Up board. Okay. Trenton says left 12, up four. Let's find out. I'm going to move this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 1, 2, 3, 4. Is, oh my gosh. That's perfect. Do I need to do that with every point? No. No, because these are rigid, which means it doesn't change the shape or the orientation. This is it. The directions tell me what to do first. Dilate, then the rigid motion. Questions? Go to the problem set. You know, try one on your own, completely, completely on your own. And by completely on your own, I mean I'll probably still help. Problem set, problem set, problem set, problem set, problem set, problem set, problem set. Where's my mouse? There it is. Okay. Here's the couple things you need to notice. Scale factor is R equals four. We are trying to go describe the sequence of a dilation followed by a rigid motion. So dilation first, rigid motion second. Here's the original. Triangle E, F, D. This guy here is the double prime. Talk it over, see how we get from this to this. Dilate first, rigid motion second. Questions? Begin. Talk it over. So we're taking this one and making it smaller. 
which means that this number has to be less than one. So I think even this is a technically four year one. But if you put this in the double that number, yeah, if I'm wrong, it has a percent chance. So if you don't have a percent chance, if you have a question for me, most likely I can answer it. To be real honest. <laughs> 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 Okay. <laughs> what are we dilating by? Jason. Absolutely. We are doing the reverse order. So if we're multiplying by four divided by one, the reverse, we're going to find the inverse, is one fourth. So we dilate by one fourth. Well, before we do that, we need what these ordered pairs are. This is zero, negative four. This is four, negative four, negative 12. This is 4, negative 8. Okay, so we would take our calculator and we would multiply by what? How are we going to reduce this? What are we going to multiply every one of those ordered pairs by? By 1 fourth. 0 times 1 fourth is 0. Negative 4 times 1 fourth is negative 1. Then I've got negative 4 times 1 fourth is negative 1. Negative 12, oh, so negative 3. 1 and negative 2. Questions on how I got that? Now would be the time because, again, I know this is a little confusing. I understand it's a little confusing. But you have to actually follow your own directions. If you're going to dilate by 1 fourth, do that. Dilate by the 1 fourth. So now I have this one. Is that perfectly on top of the other one? No. No, so now we need to translate. So now we need to get E up to this E. Landon, which way am I going to move this E? To the right or to the left? Right. To the what? Right. To the right. How many? Two. Two. So translate right. Two. And once I've moved it right to, then what, Landon? Then which way? Up, one. up one. Give me a whoop, 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 if we got that one right. Uh. <laughs> I love the time. We should make up our own language just making those kind of noises. Oh we'll start God, working on no. it tomorrow. It's gonna be great. Yes. I'll no. start. I'll start planning tomorrow. No. I'm still here, so I'm gonna start yeah. planning on it. Don't worry. I'm going to leave my door open so all of the other teachers can hear me starting to work on this. We'll start off with hello, which is going to be this. Perfect. No, no, no. You didn't, you didn't, you didn't have it vocalized, right? No, no, you're still not doing it. What is happening? Okay. So, excuse me, what? But now they're going to know how Aunt Tyler and I communicate. Questions? This is difficult. We will keep doing practice problems, but you're not going to be inundated with this on a test. It'll be one or two problems. This isn't going to be my focus for the test. I'm telling you that right now. Okay? My focus for the test is going to be more about this next lesson and the following two lessons and truly proving why something similar. So please go to lesson nine. So we've got hello. I can't wait to do like how are you? I would start with goodbye or this is what happened. This is why Mr. Agent Cook is one of my most favorite teachers. Well, don't tell Mr. Diddy that. He'd be very sad. Mr. Diddy would be very sad. He tells me every day about your drawings. Like when you show them to him, he tells me about them. He's excited every time. I literally have a list of my favorite teachers. And All right, do, 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 stop, stop, stop. You're on camera. <laughs> Let's not talk about the list of your favorite teachers. Not right now. We don't have favorites. I don't have favorites. We don't have favorites. Don't worry. Teachers are teach. That's right. Okay. So 
We are talking about similarity. Here's what we know about similarity. Similarity, the corresponding sides must be proportional. The angles must be congruent. So here's my first question. Do we know anything about the angles right now? In example one, what you're looking for, exploratory challenge one, whatever you want to call it, are there angle measures given to us? Are there? Do we know the angle measures? Does it say this is 75 degrees? No. We know nothing about the angle measures. Do we know the sides of both triangles? Yes. Absolutely. See. So to make a proportionality statement, and we call it a proportionality statement, we are going to start off with one side. And remember, it's image divided by pre-image. A prime, B prime. Divided by what corresponds to A prime, B prime? What side? Say it again, Sky. AB. This division has to be equal to another corresponding set of sides. Can somebody give me another corresponding set of sides? What divided by what? So we have A prime, B prime divided by AB. Go, wait. go Andrew, go. So B prime, C prime divided by what? Oh, um, Somebody help him out. I, I think I heard you. Go ahead. B, C. Yeah, by B, C. So, Andrew, it's the image divided by the pre-image. So if I have B prime, C prime, we're going to divide by? Original. Yeah, by the original. There you go. Good. How are we going to finish this off? What's my last set? Go ahead, Sky. A prime C prime divided by AC. This is a proportionality statement. But guess what? This doesn't tell me anything yet. This has helped me set it up. But now we need to do some substitution. What do you think we're going to substitute in for those letters? Yeah, numbers. So Trenton, look on your paper. What number am I going to put in for A prime, B prime? So look at your paper. What number is with A prime, B prime? So go to this small triangle, look for where AB is, and tell me what number is in between them. What do you think, man? Four. Mm. Just <laughs> Try again. <laughs> two. Two. Perfect. So A prime B prime is two. Trent, what's A B? What was A B then? Because you already told me to. Four. Four. So the first ratio, the first division problem is two fourths. And that better be equal to what's B prime C prime? Good Scott. Oh, you did both. Three sixths. Which better be proportional or equal to, no, I'm not calling on you again. First off, you made fun of me, and now you're trying to get all the credit. Oh, what are those poor people going to do on the video? <laughs> oh, busted. You forgot about that, didn't you? Why? Four eighths. Four eighths. Where am I getting these numbers from? So listen, A prime, B prime is two. A, B is four. Those are corresponding. A, C is eight. A prime C prime is 4. So here's my proportionality statement. Get your calculators. Do 2 divided by 4. Do 3 divided by 6. Do 4 divided by 8. And see if they're all the same. Because that gives me my scale factor, or my R. What does it give me? What's my scale factor? David. One half. So they're all the same. R equals one half, which means they are proportional. Therefore, and this is the symbol for therefore, therefore, they are similar. Those three dots mean therefore. 
you're going to see that a lot in geometry. And since we're doing geometry, I might as well teach you some of the notation. So R equals one half. All of them simplify down to one half. Does it matter if we said this is a reduction versus going the other direction? Could we flip all these numbers? Would it still be similar? Sure. If I flipped all the numbers, 4 divided by 2 equals 6 divided by 3 equals 8 divided by 4, they all give me 2, which means they're all equal, which means they are proportional, which means they are similar. This is what we're going to be doing for the rest of this lesson, is making these proportionality statements. Do we think we can make a proportionality statement? Okay. I see some people still copying. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds. And by 30 seconds, I mean until I get bored, which is quickly. So good luck. No pressure. There's a song about pressure. It's called Under Pressure. That's all I know about the whole song. That's the only words. Under, I don't even know the tune. I was going to say, I think that's like the only words I know. Yeah. Like, I'm just, again, I'm making stuff up. Here we go. Okay. So, let's go to exploratory challenge two, please. So, exploratory challenge two. Here we have triangle A. B, C. This is triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. This is triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. I want you answering questions A and B. How do I want you answering the questions? By making proportionality statements to prove that they are similar. A says A, B, C to A prime, B prime, C prime. Question B is A, B, C to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. You are going to make a proportionality statement. Andrew, keep it on your face, my man. Thank you. Questions? Begin. Talk it over. You guys can help each other. Gonna give you about two more minutes. That's it.
Okay, here we go, letter A. So one of the things that I talked about is it's image divided by pre-image. Do you need to do that to figure out whether they're similar? No, but you should still stay in the order of image divided by pre-image unless it tells you otherwise. So I'm going to set us up for the first one. A prime, B prime is 6 and 3 tenths. What am I going to divide 6 and 3 tenths by? What corresponds to 6 and 3 tenths, guy? 2 and 1 tenth. Somebody give me my next one. Dustin. Uh, a, C. Okay, which is what? 3. A prime, C prime is what? Oh, 9. 9 divided by? 3. By 3, good. Last but not least. Good what? Um, B, C. Which is? Um, 3 over 1. 3 divided by 1. So these all give me R equals 3, which that means they are similar. Why? Because they're proportional. Thumbs up if we got that one. Should feel pretty confident, yeah? Okay. Now that you've seen that, I'm going to give you one more minute to do B prime. Or not B prime. Goodness gracious. Letter B. So if you haven't done B, now you should be able to. So you're still finding out they're similar, but I really like the image of our Okay. You have new packets in front of you as well. You're going to want to keep those. Okay. He says, prime to double prime. So letter B is asking for the primes to double primes, not the original two double primes. So be careful. It's asking for the primes to double primes. So the original this time is the primes. OK, here we go. I'm going to choose A, B, double prime. So that's four and two tenths. Remember, we're comparing this to this one. What matches up with four and two tenths, Landon? So A double prime, B double prime is four and two tenths. What corresponds in this one to A double prime, B double prime? Which one? Very good. Great mathematical language, too. Six and three tenths. Give me another one. Go ahead, Sky. Say it again. I, I'm having trouble hearing you. Two divided, by three. Two divided by three. Good. B double prime, C double prime, B prime, C prime. Faith, do you want to give me the last one? Six divided by nine. Wonderful. When I divide all of these, I get R equals 6 tenths repetan. But if you use your calculator correctly and press second table enter, that gives me 2 thirds. Are these similar? Yes. They are similar. Questions. You will have questions like this on your test. What is your test? It is the Monday right before Thanksgiving. It is November 23rd. So we have all week of next week. Next Tuesday will be lessons 10 and 11. 10 and 11 is a new packet. 11 right there that I just gave you is a new packet. I don't know why it wasn't printed with the other packet. So I had to make more copies. There's also 13 and 14 in there. That will be for after your test over Thanksgiving break. You will actually have homework. It'll be the first time all year that you've actually had homework. Oh, no. I think you'll be all right. Questions, concerns, problems. Great job today. We're going to keep working on our language. And have a great day.